What's up, YouTube? Today we're going to talk about smell music or olfactory. We're going to talk about olfactory music, olfactory songs. So smell songs and smell music, which probably sounds, pun intended, really weird, but it's interesting, just like the last video, I hope. Um, so if you remember from the last video, we, we discussed about this idea that language, synesthesia, and perception were more or less the same thing. And, um, you know, they're all, they're basically different ways of representing the same thing, right? The sameness and difference thing. I thought about applying this towards smell, right? Through the olfactory language. And, and you know, one of the other ways that I wanted to flesh out this idea of the olfactory language um, was through music, because I'm also a big fan of music and the way it makes you subjectively feel and sort of compute your emotions. And I was like, well, you know, could you represent music in terms of smell? And, you know, what I realized is, okay, people, when they have, you know, that visual representation of, 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 of music on a piece of paper in terms of the visual notes or whatever, that's already a form of synesthesia and, and the language, right? But, you know, if you take that a step further, you'll look at modern DAWs like FL Studio or Logic Pro or Ableton Live, right? You literally have this MIDI pattern, this grid pattern, this very quantized representation of, of the sounds. And, you know, you can click them in, you, you can draw them in, do whatever, and you literally have a, vi a very sort of quantized, pixelated representation of the music, right, of these sounds. And just like how, you know, if you're a really, really good composer and you train for it, you can practically look at the sheet music and hear the song playing in your head and mess with it and manipulate it. You can do the same thing on the computer, um, you know, by training through that, but you can take it a step further by transferring that to olfaction. Now, what you do to transfer it is, you know, you can put on a piece of paper, you dot these smells, you do whatever, right, through, through the fragrances. And you can, you know, read it left to right, right to left, up, down, down, up, whatever. Um, but that's still relying on you to be the, the thing that moves it left to right. So the way that you get it to represent music a bit more cohesively would be you'd want to put it on some type of spinning medium. So it could be a, a motor, it could be a bearing, it could just be a cylinder, whatever. I mean, there's so many different ways you could do it. But, you know, if you think of those... The name slips me, but those old uh, things they, they used to put music on um, with the, the spatial shapes around the cylinder. It's basically the same thing, right? So you can, you know, put it on a piece of paper, grid it out, and then wrap it around the thing. And then you just have a motor that spins it. You set the tempo or the BPM, right? And then now you're smelling a song, right? You're listening to a, th a song through smelling it. And what's really interesting about that is it's not just, you're not just smelling it. There's multiple different ways of interpreting this thing because you can either have this learned language of whatever you've put on that piece of paper that represents the song. So I could say like what I've done by Linkin Park or something like that, or I can say, um, you know, I, I could say, uh, what's another good song? I could say, I don't know, some song by Tool might be a little more complicated, but let's just say, let's say, um, let's say Bad Guy by Billie Eilish, something a little more simple, right? You can have this thing represented, right, visually, like you would on a DAW, transfer that to the piece of paper, wrap it around spinning medium, and now you can, you can have this thing function that way. So you can not only have those smells trigger a sound where the sound is, you know, it's, they're mapped onto the, the patterns on, on the spinning medium. Uh, and then they, they, you know, they map to the, the, the MIDI keyboard aspects of the, of the reference song, but you can also have the smell itself be sort of synergi subjectively synergistic as a song would be to you, just how certain chord progressions and things can make you feel a certain way. The fragrance, the smell, the olfaction can do the same thing when conveyed in that medium because it's just patterned, right? And if you really think about what's what's a good smell, you know, what's a good smell in a, in a, in a food, you know, in a food dish or, you know, in, an, uh, uh, you know, in a fragrance or something, um, it's, it's just a certain combination of things that's weighted a certain way, they're patterned a certain way, right? And then that synergy represents something that's subjectively pleasant to you. So this is just kind of something I like to play around with about this idea of ways of representing perception, right? And language, um, experientially, specifically. Um, and it's really interesting. Like if you if you play around with this, it's you're gonna notice also when you listen to those reference songs, like it's just gonna feel different. Um, I don't know, just something cool I thought I, I'd let you know about. 